Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse, and I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, 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 hail and hello there, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings Podcast. And thank you. Yeah, you right there. I see you. I see you bought your front row tickets to the show this week. And it's a good one for you to have bought front row tickets, too. I appreciate that. For anybody who's wondering about front row tickets, um, there are none. It's just you got to show up for the premiere. So if you're here for the premiere... Um, I am very thankful for that. <laughs> I know it's an early morning for a lot of folks here on Thursdays, um, but it is appreciated when you guys tune into the premiere, and it's just genuinely, genuinely appreciated overall. Um, but no, don't worry, guys. There's no like buy an advance ticket to get, you know, the the front seat of the show or anything quite like that. Um, so yeah, to th today's show is going to be about uh, Loki veneration. What's up with this Loki veneration thing, this Loki worship? Why is it so controversial in a lot of heathen communities? We're going to talk about it today with Tyler, uh, Tyler Vasquez, who has, it's been a while since he um, has been on my channel. I don't think he's been on the podcast. He has, it's been a long time, probably been several seasons ago, at least two, um, I know that he had been on a couple of live streams uh, over the years, um, once or twice. But yeah, this 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 topic actually came to me through Tyler, because he was in a, I don't know, a, a Facebook group or, or, or something. Well, yeah, let me just knock over my vape. Um, <laughs> he was in a Facebook group or something where the topic came up, um, and he was hoping to get my thoughts on it. And I thought, well, I would... I'll do a podcast on it. You know, I've, I've got thoughts and that's what a podcast for me is, is, is sharing my thoughts many times. Um, and then he's like, I could probably say a few things about it too. And I'm like, well then come on the show, buddy. You know, uh, Tyler and I have been friends now for, I don't know. We've never like physically met in person. We've just been online, you know, friends for, um, several years. Um, I don't know exactly. Remember, I don't remember exactly when, he and I first connected um, uh, on social media, but he lives not too terribly far away from me in another state, in the state of Kentucky. Um, so he's just a bit north and east of me. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to bring him on here in just a moment. Before we do, please be sure to uh, check the link tree link in the description or show notes of this podcast and follow me along on all of my socials. To the YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter. Um, I don't do much on Twitter these days, it seems to be a dumpster fire over there on that platform, and I never got much traction with it anyway. So, why I bother trying to start now? But if you are on Twitter, um, give me a follow. I do try to share stuff, cross post things on my socials, but I am the most active here, um, on YouTube, of course, and the Facebook and Instagram platforms, or as they call it, meta now. Um, so, yes, I am meta-involved. Um, but anyways, there's also a link tree. Uh, sorry, there's also a spring store in the link tree link for you where you can buy my merchandise. You can become a patron on Patreon. Um, and there's a, a number of other things down there, I'm sure. So so just check it out and see what fits you. Um, and at the very least, please give this podcast an upvote. Follow, share, like it, thumbs up, whatever the thing does uh, or asks you to do. Um, it would be appreciated if you do that. Um, also wanted to call to attention that um, in a week and a half or so from now, so on September 10th, which is a Sunday here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, myself and Greg Strong of the Raven Moonhearth Kindred uh, are teaming up to teach a heathenry class. Um, it is basically heathen 101 type stuff, um, talking about um, some recommended readings, uh, how we interact with the gods as heathens, you know, the, some of the basic stuff that uh, a lot of maybe newer folks 
just interested in coming into heathenry are, are, are exploring and wanting to know more about. Um, so, you know, you've got he and I, or him and I, that's the right English, that's the proper English way. Him and I will be, um, you know, we have collectively, oh, shoot, I don't know. I don't know how long Greg's been. I know Greg has been a pagan of, of some variety, at least most of his adult life. Um, and I'm going on like nine years, just shy of a decade here soon um, in my even practices. So, I mean, we've got at least collectively, you know, several decades worth of experience that we're going to be offering to talk about this uh, this this class in. So, um, it's going to be here in Murfreesboro. The event details for that will be linked in the show notes and description as well. So, if you're close enough and you want to come out, uh, spend the afternoon with us. It's going to be rain or shine because it is an uh, an enclosed, sheltered pavilion. I say enclosed, but it's it's outdoors, but it's it is. Um, you know, sheltered. So despite the rain, we'll have bathrooms available to us. There's a playground there. If it is a nice day, you can bring the kids, family friendly. Um, you can't bring or have any like alcoholic beverages consuming going on there. So um, snacks and other beverages are welcome. But anyways, come on out. Murfreesboro, Tennessee, September 10th. Uh, I'm going to be there from 3 p.m. till the park or till the million area closes. I think it's like 7 or 8. Plenty of time for us to get to know one another, talk, have a good time, um, maybe learn some things together. But yeah, we will be there. Um, come on out and be there with us. Um, aside from that, um, there's also the Raven Moon Hearth Shadow Moot event coming up in just over a month's time, like a month and a half or so from now. Uh, the information and details for that will also be linked in the description and show notes. That is in Springfield, Tennessee, and it is a three-day weekend sort of long deal um almost three full days you know um you can get there friday um and, and get your camp set up um it is a primitive camping style deal right so um it's on one of the hearth members property um so it you know you got to deal with your own camping there will be outdoor restroom facilities as like porta potties or porta johns that sort of thing um vendors classes workshops meals ritual you know um I think it's uh, $20, $20 for the day or 45 for the weekend. You know, so if you get there Friday, you can camp Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday's the last day, and they close everything off by lunchtime on Sunday. Um, or you can just come one day uh, if you want. If you're going to come any day, I highly recommend that you come on Saturday. Um, so again, the dates and stuff will be down in the description, I believe, but, uh, in, in the show notes. I believe it's... Um, like the weekend of the whatever October 13th, 14th, 15th, something somewhere around that vicinity. Again, dates are going to be down there. If I got them wrong or if I'm off a little bit, just check down there and you will see what I'm talking about. Um, so we're going to go ahead and welcome in uh, Tyler here in just a second. Um, in the meantime, enjoy this brief intermission and see what we can talk today about um, on the topic of Loki veneration. See you guys here in just a minute. All right, guys, gals, boys, gents, ladies, everybody uh, across Midgard. We've got uh, Tyler here. Tyler Vasquez. What's going on, man? How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going pretty good. I was uh, uh, talking earlier before you got on here that this is, I think, the, is this the first podcast you've come on? I know you've been on like some lives that I've done. In, uh, I think uh, this is the ago. first official podcast. I did uh, I did your the 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 one episode a couple years back with uh matt <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it's been a while that one was uh, i think it was just us chatting on live <laughs> yep it was like a live stream or, or something on mm -hmm. the youtube channel so um but you and i have been connected for about probably three four years now something like that i'm thinking over the, uh, something like that long distance yeah yeah we, but, uh, we communicated 
through other channels prior to that, but uh, yeah. But you, you're a you're up in Kentucky though, right? Yes, sir. The old the old Kentucky, old KY. Yeah. That's a good time. So I've heard. <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> but and you're a heathen yourself, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. The hammer didn't give it away. No. Um, anything else about yourself that you'd like to? <laughs> uh, hey. Well, uh, uh, I've been a heathen for quite a long time, uh, pagan specifically, but uh, uh, as far as being a heathen, I have officially claimed that path for, man, 13, 14 years now. It's uh, a long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually, it was while I was in the military, I decided that was... I felt the pull towards that. Uh, I got something in my eyes already. They're called but, uh, eyeballs, man. They belong it, there. No, it, I know. But uh, <laughs> I got. Uh, I felt the pull while I was in the military, and I decided now's the time to go with that. Um, cool. But then uh, there was a brief period before that where I experimented with the uh, other. Uh, religions and paths and things like that but excuse me i'm gonna have to what my eyes there's there is no excuse for you tyler there's just no i believe excuse. you <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll give you a pass yeah, um, i appreciate it anyway yeah, <laughs> uh, but we um i started with that and uh i got real heavy into learning all kinds of different paganism paths and uh, history and just various different things. And I really hit home with the heathenry and uh, over the last decade or so, I've really dedicated myself to the study and not only just the history of everything, but uh, the lore, the myths, uh, the different practices of not only just like modern day, but like of the ancient, ancient heathens um studying the different tribes in the different areas and really getting into the various differences between like norse and germanic and mm -hmm. uh going all the way back up to you know following my own ancestry and lineage into like spain with the visigoths and all that and um very cool so we uh we being me and my my wife now um we're very open about our practices, uh, much to the disdain of our uh, Christian uh, surroundings. <laughs> oh, yeah, you too, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but um, we're still here, and uh, I'm actually working on, I, like I said, back here, I've got my own background. Um, about to be starting up my own podcast, uh, Wizardly Cowboy. You can follow me on Sweet. everywhere. That is the uh, same thing. Uh I'm a game developer, writer. I do a lot of things with uh, role-playing games like D&D. &D. Uh, White Box specifically is my current game that I play. Really? Uh, yeah. Nice. So uh, just a lot of a lot of things are coming for the, <laughs> in the future. Just all in the works right now. I've got a website up. I've got like two posts. So if you guys want to follow me there and look out for the future, that's uh, that's there. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, I do have a poetry book. Uh, it's called a, uh, I actually forgot. I'll probably have to, I'll get somebody to bring that to me later. But uh, yeah. I do have a book of poetry out. It's called um, A Call to Deity. Uh, and it is a book of various poems from uh, Norse mythos. that I. They're all original poems. Uh, <laughs> and from mostly Norse, but there's a few in there that's also tossed in from other religions. Uh, I think there's a triple goddess for Wiccans. I think there's a, there's a couple African deities that somebody had requested. It's all just like requested stuff that people asked me to write for them. So uh, that oh, is something that is uh, that's out there. Okay, great. So I'm gonna uh, anything that you have that you're talking about right now for the folks listening and uh and stuff the go down to the description or show notes um anything that tyler's talking about his website his 
podcast. Anything that's live or current, his book, um, links for all that are going to be shared in the in the description or show notes. So that way people can find you and support you to whatever degree. Oh, yeah. um, I'll definitely be tuning into the podcast, man, whenever you whenever you got it up and um i'm, a, I'm definitely oh. hoping to get one up this weekend <laughs> so uh keep an eye out i guess definitely yeah absolutely cool well that's good man so it sounds like you're a busy guy um so we uh we we got today's topic um that came to to the to the show through you oh yeah you, you hit me up about it and and uh you know we we were able to figure out on the on the off the cuff really just shoot from the hey you want to come on the podcast with me about it because originally i was like i'll talk about it but loki veneration and the controversy behind it in in heathenry right what's the big freaking deal anyway kind of thing you know yeah yeah um but so you had uh i guess you had engaged in the conversation in a a facebook group i'm assuming with some people and you had sent me some screenshots of the of the exchange um and I, from the from the looks of it, there were some pretty, I'll just say, like toxic approaches to the responses that were being given. I didn't see, of course, see the whole thread, but mm-hmm. w- w- it, <laughs> was that was that kind of the the nature of or the gist of it? You want to elaborate without going into too much detail, or, or kind of? What oh was yeah, it? Um, it was it was an adventure for myself. Um, <laughs> going on an adventure in a, in a, just like any uh you know internet discussion it oh yeah quickly got way out of hand you know one person said some said something that another person didn't like and it was you know was it on the top of the loki uh yes yes it was uh the the initial question uh just paraphrasing off the top of my head was uh they have always the person had always felt pulled to worship loki and what was the general consensus on mm. worship loki and what the feelings were among the community that um that people had the, the opinions of people that yeah. were loki like what are the opinions that the community has towards those people and mm-hmm. what the deal was with the uh the negative connotations that came with it um so my response to that was a generalization uh and i'm not talking like sweeping statement i said uh in general a majority of the community often feels that uh that volatile nature towards people who uh worship loki or feel affinity towards loki uh because of the people who do uh the nature of the people who do worship loki um Mm -hmm. and that is again that is a broad sweeping statement i know for a fact not everybody who worships or venerates loki is this edgelord who's looking to cause problems as quickly as possible i get it uh but i think the biggest problem is you've reached a point where uh anyone who feels as if they're outcasted from society um wants to feel affinity for loki and it is a they feel that pull they try to feel that connection but it's because they've and and this is again probably a generalization but in in my experience it has been a lot of the pull is towards the marvel character loki and not necessarily the uh, I, I say factually correct, but I mean mythologically correct. Loki, yeah, uh, in, from, from from stories, you know, yeah. Stories. Yeah. So they feel this uh, veneration towards a charming, uh, charismatic, misunderstood, kind of charismatic, misunderstood, yeah. you know, misguided, uh, outcasted character, rather than the blatant wrongdoer that we see in the story that we see in the lore we see you know he he knew even in the story with balder you know things like that he knew these things were gonna do were gonna happen he may not have known that it would have killed him 
but he still knew that it was intentionally going out of his way to cause harm. Yeah. And that's not typically the people who feel veneration towards Loki. I don't feel like they're after to cause harm. They're, they're not doing it to cause harm, but there are a lot of people who do feel that way. I see. And I think that's where a lot of the toxicity and hatred and the, uh, the disdain for Loki worshipers does come from. You know, I've, uh, and I don't know, you know, and it's interesting to get other people's perspective um, on this. And anytime, I mean, it's kind of like if you want to, if you want to, as a content creator, you know, from, from coming from the angle of posting content to keep people engaged, you're almost bound and guaranteed to have a spike in views and engagement when you start talking about Loki, right? It's like it brings everybody out of the woodwork, you know, more so than some of the more prominent gods of the lore and uh, uh, other source material that are actually attested to as being deities that were venerated, you know? Loki just seems, seems to get the, the spotlight in, in so many ways whenever he's talked about. Um, and what's interesting is like last week's episode, I talked about Sigyn, his wife, and how uh the devotion the 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 you know the 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 strength that she had to to stay devoted to him even out of all of the things that he's responsible for and ultimately gets imprisoned for having involvement with in which you know when we talk about like the lore and the myths um i mentioned in the last week's podcast and i think it's important to mention here too is as, as, as a general rule, you know, I think any any anybody with enough miles under their tires that have been doing this for the amount of time like you or I have been doing it, don't look at the myths as like a Bible, right? We're not, we're not, and again, not trying to like overgeneralize or use like sweeping statements to speak to the entirety of, of a heathen community. Um, but I think that the, the more you spend time looking at the, like the historical sources, the the actual source material of of the Germanic tribes, and then where they migrated north into Scandinavia and what became the Norse countries. You 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 look at the myths a bit differently than you might you might have initially coming into it. You know, mm -hmm. um, at least it was for me. It's like uh, they don't. I don't do things. <laughs> I don't do the things that I do based off of what the gods did in the myths. You know, yeah. and there is that aspect to this, you know, like I, I use the term Norse mythology or the mythos. Uh, and I mean that, you know, and, and I've gotten some kickback on that. Call it a religion. Call it a faith, because that's what it is. I'm like, it's the mythology is part of the faith. Just like in Christianity, you know, the, the, the stories, the 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 myths, the, the, the whatever, you know, the books from the Bible. I mean, that that's the mythology aspect of the religion. Yeah. If you want to just break it down, you know what I mean? And I think every religion has that. So we were talking about specific things pertaining to the religion and the mythology does not. Uh, at least I don't think, in my opinion, should be anything that is referenced to as this is why or how we should do things. There are other source materials that you can go to to learn about morals and ethics um, in terms of taking this from a religious aspect, but we're talking specifically about like the Loki thing and how you mentioned um, people getting uh, drawn to this uh, Marvel character versus the, the character from, from the myths. And what's, what's interesting about the myths is as kind of a roundabout way that I was getting to it is, you know, Loki gets the shit end of the stick basically um, for killing Balder, but he isn't even, he ain't even the one that did it. Nope. <laughs> you know, Holder is the god killer, essentially. You know what I mean? He's the one that did it. Um, sure, he was blind and he couldn't have really done it had it not been for Loki's involvement with it. So, but interesting point to take away there is yeah. from from the mythology aspect. Like now, there were plenty of other things that he had direct involvement in. I mean, Sif's hair, um, the 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 building of of Asgard, which. The, the, the wall, I mean, the building of, of yeah. the citadel, the wall around Asgard, you know, like how the gods... The details of the wall. <laughs> yeah, how the, gods get, how, the, how the gods get their their magical items. I mean, Brisagamen, Freya's necklace, uh, Gungnir, <laughs> Odin's spear, or Draupnir, his ring, Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. Um, I'm sure there's others that I'm missing, but, he, you know, 
had it not been for Loki and the myths, the gods wouldn't have some of the trappings and things that they're quite famously known for. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so, like, I don't know. Around here, um, I've noticed that the, the majority of folks who are unapologetically, um, I guess the term would be Lokian, right? Uh, uh, I, I guess. I hate that term. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, if, if we had to, like, classify, if we had to put a, a name to stuff, I mean, you know, yeah. we call ourselves heathens, you know, uh, and then there's other different names and stuff that I guess could go with it. But I've heard the term Loki and I've heard the term uh, Rokatru, which kind of, come, you know, goes into more of Loki's offspring. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the veneration. That's a new one. I've never heard that one. Really? Rokatru? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a new one. <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, the it, it, it's the veneration of the 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 chaotic forces. So specifically, folks that are, to my knowledge, uh, you know that that would call themselves like Rokatru, mm -hmm. are into stuff like Loki veneration, but also any of Loki's <laughs> affiliates. So Jormungandr, Fenrir, mm -hmm. Hel, um, Angerboda. I mean, like oh, okay. A lot of the the monsters and 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 whatnot of the myths get encompassed in that too. So, but um, why such a controversy? You think? I mean, aside from the fact that from your experience, you've seen the it's the the affinity, uh, you know, the the romanticization of the Marvel character versus what's in yeah. the stories. Like, what makes it so controversial to actual heathens? Besides that, do you think? If there now, this may else. get. This is where things can turn <laughs> sour for people, uh, but it's the behavior of those people. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it, there's often a. They're so against the grain of going against authority, uh, or being being that outcast, being the one who is. Uh, outside of that the the natural order quote unquote of things the structured uh, order of things you the structured might say structured order yeah the structured order is probably a better term uh they they're so willing to do anything and everything within their power to be outside of that structure that it causes that chaos it causes the disorder and it often comes from the people who are i guess for lack of a better term loki um again i'm not saying i believe that's true i'm not saying i believe that uh anybody who venerates loki or worships loki is out there looking for trouble mm. uh but i think there is a stigma to it because of that because so many people have come from that uh especially people who have been uh now in my personal experience i've experienced a lot of that um a lot of people who uh, have that I've met that are, uh, well, I, I worship Loki. Loki's my patron deity. Um, they are the ones who are often the edge lords. They're the ones who are often the uh, the people out there just to, you know, the screaming everybody else is uh, a snowflake. You know, they're the kind of people who are, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're I, I stop being so offended by everything and then. Uh, run around saying some off the wall crazy stuff, and it's like that's interesting because I've from from my uh, again from from where I'm in. Of course, we're in different areas, and this is this is what's really interesting to hear people's takes on stuff because uh, I'm in one area of the country, and you're in a not that far away from me, but a, a, another area of the country. So the things you see that might not necessarily see the things be the things that I see. Mm -hmm. Or experience but like in our area i've noticed that um folks who are unapologetically lokian and that have an affinity towards loki um are folks that live an alternative lifestyle or have um a, an alternative um approach to their identities and 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 things you know so a lot of the the lgbtq community uh tends to have mm -hmm. a higher percentage for in our area at least of folks that 
are fascinated by Loki for the reasons I think that you're talking about, right? Because oh, yeah. Loki in the stories, you know what I mean? Like they they it's the Marvel uh the Marvel character Loki yeah, that but, and I'm not I'm not if you feel that that is how Loki is <laughs> in your beliefs, more power to you. A hundred percent I support yeah. it. Uh you know, um if you if you really have a f- divine connection, you feel that you are pulled to Loki for that reason. Um I've got nothing against you. All oh, love yeah. on this side. <laughs> I don't think I'm sitting I mean, here crap yeah, like, because you're a Lokian or you believe you venerate Loki more than the other yeah, guy. Me that's, either. Not, that's not what We're I'm just trying calling to do. It... No. Yeah. Uh, but the, the generalization is, um, I, from my experience, I've been other countries. I have been with people from other countries. Uh, in fact, my, my buddy, he's from Florida. He's, he's, he's living in Florida right now. We play D&D uh, all the time. He is a pagan as well. Uh I don't know really his opinions on the things, but I'm sure he could probably tell me completely separate stuff than what either of us are seeing, you know, because that's just, you know, the areas are so different. And I think that's I think that's what's beautiful about just about all paganism in general is there are so many different takes on it. There oh, are yeah. so different, uh, such a wide spectrum, you know, mm-hmm. um. and that is uh I think that's what pulls a lot of people towards paganism, especially for spirituality. Uh, that 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 spiritual need in human human nature is uh, the ability to express oneself through deity in any pagan path. Uh, is yeah. kind of the key aspect, I think. Yeah, hey, I can see that, and even even if you look at. If it's not the Marvel side of things, you know, um, if you if you look at Loki in the stories, uh, he is that necessary change. I mean, he 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 is involved in things that are that ne- right. Like so, the the whole like Sif's hair, you know, like mm-hmm. that was a shitty thing. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. why would you do that? And um, and then the end result of it, you know, is is he gets gifts to all of the gods that. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, Thor, here's your hammer, and and, and you know, you're up there. You know, you know, all the all the gods get the things again that they're kind of known for, and it's like, you know, you almost go back and you go. I I look at the myths in a way as 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 lessons, kind of like how you know the fables of, of Greek, like Aesop's fables. Like there was a moral to the story. There was something to be learned in the story. And and does any of the of of Loki stuff uh, in mm-hmm. the stories align with? A, a morality or ethics that existed at the time, you know, like you can't, you can't expect to do something against your own people and not have to pay a, a, a recompense for it. And not have to pay and, a price for it and pay a price for it. Like you can't go against your, your, your people and, yeah. and do something of, of damaging nature and then not expect to be held accountable for it. And then look at ultimately what happens when he, while maybe not necessarily quote, you know, pulling the proverbial trigger on Balder, but being so influential and and so so much a part of what ended up happening is that that was it. Like, dude, you're out now. You're neithing. You're outlaw. You're cast out of the society. You're in prison, and and there is no you. You've killed one of your own. And look at the morality and the ethics that existed at the time. Kinslayers were. Oh yeah, that was pretty high, high criminals, you know, and and stuff. And if you, you know, weren't were, killed, you were outcasted you were yeah. gone right and if we look at that instead of this you know view of of the marvel loki as this kind of again this misunderstood and mis, misguided you know uh charismatic bad guy that you love to hate mm-hmm. um and and like there's so much more i think about the gods that you could take away from that we actually have information and, and source material on than to cherry pick and find little things about a lesser god and let's just say like loki is involved in a lot of things like he's he's thor's companion in so many of his you know adventures and 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 things in the stories and and he's so influential in 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 making certain things happen in the myths but like in terms of 
finding it finding him in 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 older sources you know he doesn't show up prior to the viking age he doesn't show up in, in any of the germanic countries mm -hmm. of the south he you know that happened i think uh much I later on a, a, a lot of the his, history is lost to us and we're never going to know the, the true yeah ways yeah. of old you know and i think we that's haven't found anything we need yet about. To, <laughs> i think that's something we need to embrace um just in general as as a community as if, if we're ever going to get anywhere without uh, at least about the uh hostilities between different uh beliefs and things um I, I i think we really need to embrace the idea that religion regardless of path uh faith itself whatever you want to call it is an evolving thing uh, mm -hmm. It changes with society. It changes with you. Uh, as you grow, you change. Much like my story, I began with studying all kinds of different pagan paths and looking at different gods. You know, initially I was like, why am I pulled to all these different deities instead of, you know, what my family grow tried to raise me up as, as a, as a, you know, a Christian, as a Baptist. And yeah, I never felt connected to that ever. And that's something that, uh, they still have a hard time understanding and I get a lot of flack for my ideas that we should evolve our faiths based on time. And especially from like the recreationists, mm. <laughs> I'm not trying to knock recreations. I think those guys are necessary. We need recreation. We need people doing the historical digging. We need to find, because if things are found, it needs to be remembered. Oh yeah. The, the, like the, the recreation, uh reconstructionist host, historical recons yeah the the folks that really i did a podcast not too long ago with scott shell talking about the pros and cons of that and kind of where we landed on it where uh, i wouldn't say like definitively landed but like one of the things that really stood out were the differences between subjective learning and objective learning you know, and how academics at large, if you're going to approach this entirely and purely from an academic standpoint, there is no subjectivity allowed. You have to be objective to it. And it's like, well, it's this way or it's not, you know, and, there, and it, there's no in so much of this as a religion, as a, as a folk way, as a living tradition, as a way that you live and, and breathe and, and ex, you know, experience life. There has to be that subjective approach to it. You know, you can't just be so cemented into archaeological literary evidence you know like it's great you know to, to that case in point like we're, we're going to talk eventually uh, uh, about loki's affiliation potentially with one of the days of the week you know um, mm -hmm. we're going to get to that here and just you know at, at some point i think before the episode's over with but um there's some historical stuff that i'm going to reference to that point um you know spoiler alert the germanic tribes didn't use days as time reckoning there wasn't <laughs> yeah. there were no days of the week um spoiler so so stick around to the end of this podcast folks because if you want to know what the heck i'm talking about you're gonna have to stick around for that you know um but well, as yeah far as the, sorry. the historical no you're fine um as far as the historical reconstructionist goes i was actually on a uh few years back i was on another podcast uh, i won't say the name because the well the person's not a very good person we'll put it that way uh <laughs> uh i get it person now so uh but uh i was on there with uh ocean keltoy um and i actually oh. talked to him briefly about it and one of the things that i had put forth was that uh the stories themselves, uh, a lot of them were written down much longer or much, much, much further off after the, uh, the end of the Viking age, um, than what people realize, like hundreds of years after, uh, and sure we've got, uh, the Come about like Snorri's prose edda, right? Yeah, like when... the Snorri, Snorri's prose edda, those things that people, they people thump like a Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
that and that's an, another person from that same post about the Loki thing got on there and was like, uh, well, I don't use anything other than this. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but all of your sources were written by Christians. Like they were, I, I mean, yeah. And it's just something you're going to have to deal with. Like it's, well, well, no, this one was written in Old Norse. And I'm like, Old Norse came from Latin, which Latin came from the Christians when they came up there. It was after Christianity had been put in. Like, I Old, well, don't know how to tell you. Well, well, Old Norse is a Germanic language. Well, the, and... the written language is what I was speaking about. Oh, okay. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the actual written. They translated it into Latin. Or, yeah, they translated it into, yeah. Yeah, I got you now. So that was... <laughs> So, uh, and another thing they, I get, I got chucked under the bus for was quoting, uh, Jackson Crawford, Dr. Jackson Crawford, <laughs> and they're the, the general, right, he's not a heathen. He's not a heathen. So, you know, you can't, so he must be you wrong. Trust him. he, he has no idea what he's talking about. Cause he doesn't believe it. I'm like, he's literally <laughs> one of the prime people I would trust. Like one of the people that I would look to for information, Okay, so I'm gonna dis I'm gonna put a disclaimer out here for everybody listening and watching because this is this is one of them again like hot button topics for the reasons <laughs> that you stated, right? I oh, think yeah. Jackson Crawford offers a great source of of uh, of of knowledge when it comes to Germanic language, mm -hmm. the linguistic sides of things. I don't look to him for anything more than that. I think that he knows his stuff because he has a doctorate degree in norse languages you know the germanic languages and mm -hmm. uh he's 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 studied abroad and he's he's you know worked in academia to some degree whether he's you know t taught at a university or just um whatever you know he has credentials and stuff that back up and you know suggestions and that he knows what he's talking about i think scott shell is another great source for that and he's a heathen he's a saxon heathen he actually is living the life He's mm -hmm. doing the thing, you know what I mean. So if you want to, I think that comes back back around to what you said. Uh, it's good to have uh, different uh, sources of information. It's good yep. to have to hear other people's perspectives. Uh, it's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Even people yeah. just and, and, I, like I sit and I talk to my my stepdad. He's a he's a he's a uh, Baptist preacher. Like we sit and talk and discuss philosophy and things like that all the time. It's something that is, to me, I find it fascinating. I just, I learn a yeah. lot. And and wisdom is wisdom from wherever it comes. I've 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 been a, a parrot with with that phrase. Um, mm -hmm. Repeated that phrase a lot on my podcast, but it's a it's a, um, it's not a verbatim quote, but it comes from one of the sagas, the Bandamanga saga. You know, wisdom is wisdom from wherever it comes. That's the general theme of that phrase. Right. And so much of what uh, what people will shoot down or discredit is that, well, if the information it could be good information, right, it could be legitimately good information, historically backed, valid information. Right. But because so and so said it and because of so and so being affiliated with this shit bag or this dirt hole or whatever, all of a sudden that information is negated. It's not valid because of where it came from and i gotta go you know look are we just gonna are we just gonna be objective in that way and just go well or, or, or subjective you know are we just gonna take what people are saying and not explore for ourselves not think for ourselves not have that fr independent free thinking going on and and you know learn for ourselves um or are we just going to take it everybody's word for stuff and, and be like, well, because so-and-so said we shouldn't listen to that content or watch that video or read this material. That's not even really thinking at this point. That is just a symptom of modern society. Honestly, uh, that's a completely other topic. We could do a mm -hmm. whole other podcast on. Yeah, true. But I, that, that is, uh, that is something that is just a detriment to society. That, that people have fallen into the habit of just uh, bandwagoning really is what it is. Um, just follow yeah. uh, the easy, the path of least resistance. 
it's well if everybody's saying it then it must be right exactly yeah i don't want to be wrong uh and that's something yeah. I've even had to try to instill in my kids lately because they, they do the same stuff. You know, one kid decides to do something, they're all out there doing it. It's like, no, stop. That's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dangerous thing to, to get involved in, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like, uh, and, and it's funny how it kind of almost aligns in a little bit of a way with uh, the Loki thing, you know, because like you mentioned before, right, people for whatever reason you know bring up this image this idea of loki i mean the thumbnail for this like I, i've had uh <laughs> i've had people yell at me not like literally yell but like they've had people like complain to me like what's up with the tom hiddleston loki you know look or thumbnail yeah. I'm like <laughs> i don't know man like blame marvel i guess for this because like i didn't draw the thing like this you know and, and but, even still what's he supposed to look like like who the hell think, knows <laughs> you know we don't I, have saying, like, I don't think there's any sources of description for loki like the only thing we've got is that he's supposed to be half half giant and so are like half of asgard what, what you know do what they mean? look like, like? <laughs> what the, and the giant thing the, goes back into like uh i think a mistranslation of the word jotun Mm -hmm. Because Jotun, Jotun, like that, that, that word is cognate to a word that meant eater, mm -hmm. consumer. Like it, it doesn't have any connotation to someone of a, of a giant stature or a bigger than the next person thing. Yeah. Like it, but somehow over the years, it's become associated with these like just, deformed just, or, or troll like or just mm -hmm. massive things like the Jotun are gods themselves they're just a different tribe just like the vanir are a different tribe they're all since we're on the topic of the image of the gods i think one image of that that i really like and that was probably the question we've ever had to be inaccurate was the image of four in uh, the god of war game where he's like that big hefty dude you know <laughs> he, he looks like the, the strong man he looks like the modern strong man with the, the real broad bodies, the big heavy, they eat a lot, they drink a lot, they, but they can also lift a lot. And you're talking, these guys are able to lift 100, 100 pounds, like world record, they get 1,000 pound deadlifts and stuff like that. And it's like, you're not going to get that with Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. The body, like, that's just not how that works and Thor is supposed to be this yeah man, he, he's supposed to be this strong the strongest person. of the gods so you get you get this image that's supposed to be but because he looks what most people consider it fat they won't throw him throw the image well, that's not realistic he doesn't look like Marvel. <laughs> and again we come back around to People complain that the image doesn't see what they feel like should. Yeah. And uh, I forget where I was even going <laughs> sorry, sorry. with that. Just, no, no, no. It's fine. Because, like, I had this. Um, but, 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 yeah. So, like, you know, anyway, whatever it was, um, it's a thing. You know, uh, people yeah. will will find almost like they'll find inspiration anywhere and and i've talked to or not necessarily talked to people but i've heard from people that um have have kept loki as a focal point of their religious practice for a very long time like for as long as you and i've been heathen or practicing like they've maintained and kept him all right as 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 a focal point and you know one of the interesting things that i've come to learn you know from that um is if i can find it um i'm gonna look at well maybe not because the f the ratio is a little bit off but anyway i was gonna uh, i'll find it hold on um yeah, here it is. 
they say that you know it's he's he's the the unavoidable force it's 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 the whole like chaos thing of nature right like things are going to happen no matter what and he's just that physical representation of the unbridled uncontrollable aspect of nature i guess you could say that right in some of the stories like it's it's the inevitable right it, um not to not to get back to marvel or, or whatever you're saying i am inevitable <laughs> but um Somebody said also too that uh, working with Loki for ten years is one of he said he's one of the best deities I worked with, and absolutely not evil. Now that's an interesting thing to to point out is evil, mm -hmm. right? What people think of as evil, they want to associate with Loki in a lot of ways, and I'm talking like the controversy of venerating Loki, right? Oh yeah, well, he's 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 evil. Oh right? yeah, that is that was definitely something in that comment section. Um, but first to comment on what you had said, I had my mic muted um, about the change and being the natural order of things. I, I, I would agree with that. It, inevitably, things are going to change. And those things can sometimes be dark. They can be violent. Uh, they can be not good, <laughs> you know, but change is natural and it does happen. Yeah. Uh, and we're we're just going to have to rock with it. Just like in the stories, the gods, if it, they move on. It get, the problem gets solved or it doesn't, and then it moves on. Right, um, and I think that the evil, right, the the the, the evil, evil thing, thing comes from subjectivity. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. I've always said evil, good and evil, is an idea of subject is subjective. It you know what one person thinks is good is something that thinks is evil. You know, there's plenty of right. people that uh, you know thinks political moves and things are good. Other people think they're evil, and that yeah, I, that that just leads to more conflict within the community. You know, just the ideology of what is and isn't good or evil. Yeah, when you try to when you try to universally label something like heathenry, I, I mean, like, and what is good or what is evil, right? I mean, granted, if you look at and, and this is what I keep going back to is like you can't go – you can't use any of the Eddas. You can't use any of the myths as your sole uh, – you know, like you, you, the, 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 old, the one entire thing that you're going to base your worldview on because they're myths. They're, 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 they're stories. Okay. Learn about the ethics and worldview and understand why things were viewed – by these people a certain way right read the culture of the Teutons by Gronbeck, you know yeah. uh, you know and other uh stuff like I that would, you know, like... A, a reason i said earlier that that jackson crawford is somebody i would trust is because he comes at it from a historical and educational point of view and that's where i have learned the most about mm -hmm. our culture our history as heathens that yeah. is where i have learned the most it is a good thing to know your lore it is a good thing to know the myths it is a great thing to have parts and quotes from them so that you can use and teach lessons and mm -hmm. explain them to your children as you're as you're growing and as you're but if you are using those things as a basis for telling somebody what is right and wrong you are wrong and, and i'm, I'm I will die on that hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, I've, I've come on here plenty of times and said, you know, like, I'm not here to tell you how to be a heathen, do, do your right. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not in that position. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, like, the, the myths are not a basic instruction manual. They are myths. Yep. Case in point, right, since we're talking about Loki today, like, one of the big arguments that I hear about why people should include loki in their practices is it because well odin said that he would not accept a an offering to him if one wasn't given to loki and i'm like hold up wait a minute what it says in locust senate is that odin and loki mingled blood at one point doesn't there's no other reference and that I've come across anywhere in the stories that we have that exist today that suggest or, or, or give any 
greater context as to what that mm -hmm. looked like or what that was for, right? But he yeah. mentions in Locust Center that they mingled their blood, right? And that if a drink is given to Odin, then a drink must be given to Loki. Mm -hmm. Okay. My whole point with that and my whole thing with that is like, what the hell does that have to do with me and you? That's yeah. their thing. That's, that's, you know, in the myth, that's, like, that's their agreement. It's the um, whole blood brothers argument. One comes with the other. And I think that is a Christianization. Another one that's, it may be vague. But I think it is, again, it is the, the idea of Odin God, Odin good, uh, Loki, evil. You, they One would, go, must go with the other. Right. That, like, that is, uh, that's just something that I, at least in my mind, I don't really have any kind of, you know, educational oh, yeah, material to back that idea up. It's just something that I heard it. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, and um, I can do that. You know, that's just that's just how it comes off to me. I mean, if somebody comes on here and they're able to explain it a little better and a little clearer, maybe I'll accept it. Maybe I, you could change my I'm mind. I want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm 100 percent open to changing my mind. If you've got an argument that you think you can change my mind with, awesome. Let's hear it. But um, up until yeah. then, I've, that's the that's how I view that at least. Yeah. But and I I, I think that's also. Um, I, I don't think it's an argument against it, though, either. I don't think somebody can take, well, th well, that evidence doesn't stand, so, well, now I don't have to venerate Loki. I don't have to honor Loki at all, or you shouldn't or should not be doing that. I don't think that's a something either. I don't. Uh, so I don't using the lore here as the opposite right oh, this is what i should do because the lore says and then the folks that will say well this is what i'm not gonna do because of what the lore says right is that where you're kind of leaning it or is that where you're going with it like the 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 mirror opposite of the arguments because i've done that you know what i mean like i've gone and said well i'm not going to include loki in my practices mm -hmm. uh because he is directly affiliate you know he's in he's 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 a direct he has he has involvement with the destruction of with, with ragnarok i mean he's he he, ins, he does the thing that incites ragnarok right the destruction yeah. of the gods and all that and also like mythologically speaking why would i want to bloat to 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 a to a figure like that right that's been i think, that, I think the actual answer to that for me at least my point is um for my part is that it goes back to a, another one of your talks. Actually, I learned about from you uh, recently was the, the discussion of the hearth cult. Um, yep. I think that is, uh, that's part of yours. You know, um, yes. I feel like if you feel that Loki should be included, go for it. If you don't feel that Loki should be included, don't do it. Um, I, I think that I feel that way about any of the deities. Uh, if you don't feel there, that's something that we do know about history is that tribes or just individuals showed more natural affinity to certain deities. Sometimes you found Thor. Sometimes you found Odin. Sometimes you found Tyr. Sometimes you found small little things of the elves, the fae, you know, just different stuff right. is there that we can see that they showed more affinity to than yeah. others. And that's okay. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and, we, we, and, we that. That, and we know that they brought other deities in. In fact, uh, we think that Odin is actually uh, an adoption of something else. I've seen that is, uh, from uh, historians. is saying that the stories of Odin and are actually adopted from somewhere else like just another tribe oh, yeah and that's been that blew my mind i didn't know that i was like holy crap you know <laughs> yeah 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 and that's just i mean you can go down so many rabbit holes with like origin oh, yeah. stories and uh, and again that i think that loops us all the way back full circle again to to learn to i guess, I guess my final point for that is uh learn from each other don't yeah. ridicule don't uh, don't tell somebody they're wrong for believing the way they do. Learn why they do that. 
under, seek to understand more rather than ridicule and criticize, and you'll be a better person for it, in my opinion. Absolutely, you know, because we, we we have a tendency to be like, oh, if you're if you're using the myths as your sole guideline of of the religiosity, then you're wrong. Like that's we we've said it. One of us both or both kind of alluded to that. Like, well, you're wrong if that's what you're. Yes. Doing. But what we're saying is like, but why are you using the myths when there's so much other stuff that you could be learning from actually teaching you about morals and ethics? Like, why would you use stories? In, instead of doing your homework and doing some other things, right? We might take it from an approach of like, well, that's wrong because that's not what they're intended for. It's not what they were ever meant for. It's what they've kind of been created into being over time and, and, and leveraged into being over time. It doesn't make sense to us. It seems wrong to us, right? Mm -hmm. To use mythology as the basis of our, you know, our, our spiritual and, and, religious practices. And, you know, we could, we could very well be wrong in that regard, but I think that's part of the evolution of our faith. I yeah. think that's part of the growth. Well, absolutely, because who, who, who when you first came into you know her heathenry, right? Germanic mm -hmm. heathenry, Norse heathenry, whatever, right? What were the you know that's the first thing that you encounter. One of the first things that you encounter is the stories, the mythology. Oh yeah, you know? the first one I the first one I felt naturally pulled to was the story of Tyr and Finner, and the reason was for that was because I was looking for a place to put my courage to find that, you know, I was in a place I didn't want to be. I was in, you know, I was in a, a, a war torn country away from uh, my, my ex-wife. Now my wife at the time who had my unborn child, uh, I was there during the childbirth. I didn't get to come home for that. Uh, which, uh, I, I mean, I'm not whining about it. A lot of people don't come home for that. But there, there's a whole story behind that. I won't get into it. But mm. um, there was just a lot of things that happened one right after another that I was just like, where do I go now? You know, nothing that I've tried has really felt anything. And then I was I was really at my lowest point, And I, I, I felt lost. And I read... A magazine, I think it was a Smithsonian magazine, and it was talking about they had found a sword with uh, inscriptions to tear on something. It was something to that regard, or a helmet. Yeah, it's a T like that. That, yeah. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, they found that, and I was like, "What is what is that? It looks cool, you know." And it reminds me of you know Lord of the Rings, and you know, oh, wow, cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I started doing my research, and I was like. Why have I never heard of this? Why have I never been taught about this? And like the more I started getting into it, the more I was like, this is where I belong. This is my home. You know, yeah. this is uh, this is what's calling to my spirit. And, uh, you know, doing that, I found all kinds of things that really led me to look into my own ancestry and find you know, my, my Scottish origins, my, you know, the, the Spanish origins and just really just dig deep and find the materials there that were not because I needed some, uh, look, I'm a real <laughs> heathen. No, I didn't. I'm a descendant that. of so-and-so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah no, I'm a descendant of Ragnar Lothbrook. No, I didn't need that. I just needed, I wanted to know. Why do I feel this way? Why am I pulled to this? And that was why it's in my blood. It's in my spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and that was that's why I felt so lost. And once I found that I discovered who I am. And I think that's something that a lot of the Lokians are trying to do is find who they are, mm -hmm. is find a path that belongs to them, find their home. And so I, I don't agree with the toxicity to you know, cap this off. We're coming up on the the, yeah. end the, the hour here. So yeah, uh, and you can drop whenever. Um, no, but, you, yeah. Uh, to cap off my, my whole thing. Um, I think that they, uh, they found their home and I don't agree with the toxicity towards them. I think we need to learn from them. I think a lot yeah. of people need to uh, welcome these people with open arms, understand that that's what 
our ancestors would have done. I like that. You know, um, it's it's such a it's such a the landscape you know that you have to navigate through nowadays is 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 so strange at times, mm -hmm. and um, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that it is, by and large, you know, strange, and we don't necessarily understand everything. And we're not intended to or meant to understand everything. Or at least to understand everything. Right. So the way people find the, where, where they find themselves, um, we, we would do better to be welcoming to, 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 to that degree and, and opening open to that degree to want to learn and understand. Because who knows, maybe the things that we have in our pursuit of order, right, and, and folks like us who, who 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 maybe don't have a have a place for Loki in our in our practices, right? We we want to avoid the chaos. We want to try to keep order as much as possible, understanding that chaos is a natural element of of existing. I mean, things happen that you can't control. It, it happens. We understand that. But 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 having that 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 sort of chaotic element in our lives and trying to understand maybe maybe by understanding that it gives there's a balance that happens, right? The people that are so dis disassociated or disjointed or trying to find a home or, or, or trying to find the place and finding that place in this, you know, chaotic existence, maybe the anchor point of others can help them find that calm in the storm and vice versa, right? We can, we can learn from the tenacity and the, the ingenuity and the, how fluid they can be to in situations. Brain. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's opportunity on both sides to really learn and not to just drive a nail into it and be so definitively against it, you know, and, and to then in that defense become so toxic in the process, you know, and to grow from it. Is, right. Uh, that should be our end goal. Bro. Yeah. I agree with that. Well, last thing I want to say though, before I let you go is, um, I mentioned earlier, you know, for people to stick around towards the end about the days of the week and Saturday uh, uh, and, 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 and stuff. I'm, I mentioned it earlier. So here we are at the end of the podcast. <laughs> the guys stick around. Here we are with it. Um, Saturday, a day of the week that somehow along the way has become uh, associated with Loki. And you're going to find stuff online, guys. If you go and Google it right now, you're going to find stuff online that would lead you to believe that Saturday – is a day of the week that is an old Norse day associated with with Loki. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into too much great detail. I will be leaving some actually good links and, and things for you guys to check out in the description show notes. So come back, go down there over here, wherever. Look it up for yourself. Educate yourselves. Learn in that way. I will provide those things for you. So I'll give you a bit of a heads up, a little bit of a head start. Um, but one of the fun things to note is that Tacitus, who is a roman uh historian who observed germanic tribes that predate the scandinavian uh countries right the mm -hmm. old germanic tribes in the south tacitus mentions in his uh, i think it's germania that uh you know they did not the germanic peoples did not observe time by days of the week as they did, as the Romans did. They didn't have days of the week. They reckoned time by the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. The the moon and the, the lunar solar cycles were their gauges on um, when things happened, right? So they didn't necessarily have days of the week. The, 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 the days of the week, the names of the days of the week that, that came into a seven-day week as we have it now happened much later on, and it happened through Roman uh, involvement now saturday being a day generating loki or, or having anything to do with loki it's speculated and it's deduced possibly that there's etymological words where the, loki's name is cognate to a day or to a word that meant laundry lauger because mm -hmm. uh lauger dog lauger day uh became a day of the week <laughs> where people would ritually bathe Again, there's going to be more information. People can do their research. I'm going to find I'm going to find you some good source material to find uh, information on that yourself. So check the description show notes for all of that. Um, but uh, I don't think we can definitively say for sure that Saturday, the day of the week, as we know it now in the 
what are we? Was it the Gregorian calendar that we're using now, or is it the Julian? Yeah. Calendar? Whichever one, the Gregorian calendar that we're using now, okay. right? Yeah, is that that it had ever had at any point in time an, uh, an association to Loki? So, more information on that will be down in the description and show notes of the podcast. Um, Tyler, anything else that you want to say to the folks before you bounce off of here? Uh, no, I think I said it all. Be kind to each other. Be good to each other. Learn from each other and grow. Continue to grow and learn. That's the best way to be a heathen. <laughs> so, I agree, man. Uh, and, uh, you know, folks that are Lokians or, or, or have a place in their practice for Loki uh, or in their practice and have Loki as part of it, um, comment down below. Put your comments yeah, down below. Uh, there's going to be a poll on the podcast platform uh or not a poll but a, a, a q and a i'd love to hear from folks that listen to this um so be sure to check I'll that out and i too because i want to learn more if if there's something that maybe i missed or we yeah. both misrepresented or something or didn't understand or spoke out about that you felt was wrong let us know you know that's something if if uh i definitely would like to learn more if that's something that uh you Absolutely. There might be somebody out here that knows something that nobody else does, and this will be the thing that gets us all educated. We'd love to hear mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. Um, but Tyler, thank you for taking time out of your day to come on here and, and, and chat with me about this. Thank you for suggesting the topic. Mm -hmm. um, again, everybody else, check out Tyler's stuff that's going to be annotated in the show notes and description of this podcast. His podcast coming up, um, what's it called? Wizard? Wizardly Cowboy. <laughs> Wizardly Cowboy. <laughs> and also his book on poetry. So all that stuff will be linked down there. You guys be sure to check it out. Thank you all so much for your support. And until we talk to each other again, may the gods continue to notice you. And may your ancestors smile upon you. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.